Well, this begins the road trip then. Let's hit the road. Welcome back to the grand finale of my Ultimate Easy On Road Trip. In this vlog, I'll be doing some of Road to Rua's most iconic and exhilarating activities. Then I'll be camping on a farm which is only a three minute drive away from Hobbiton, where I'll be in Nurk Heaven. Then I'm reluctantly heading up to Auckland where my luck runs out, and I've got to say goodbye to Dan the van and prepare to leave for my next adventures. Well, good morning everyone, it's now officially day six of the trip. I did quite a few things in the last episode. If you haven't seen it already, I'll link it on screen. I'll link it on screen here in the description below. Don't forget to check out episode one and two before you watch this one because otherwise it'll be all topsy-turvy. Anyway, first thing this morning, I've decided to come and do an ultimate New Zealand experience. The Zorb. The Zorb is as iconically Kiwi as bungee jumping or jet boating. Yet it's another one of the amazing adventure inventions spawned by New Zealand. Zorbing's been on my bucket list for a while. It's a giant inflatable ball that you climb inside and roll down the hill. Let's roll down the hill. Right, okay. Crazy, the mind of the youth. There's four tracks, the dual straight, great for racing your friends, the sidewinder, lasts a little bit longer and zigzag down the hill, the mega, which is the fastest and steepest, and the pipeline, which is sort of the scenic ride. I got a deal online that lets me try the straight track and sidewinder track, giving me yet more to my ever-growing trip savings. And yeah, I'm still keeping track of the scores. That was absolutely incredible. It's like being inside a giant beach ball. This is the bit that is a bit shocking. When you have to get out, you're flushed out of that nice warm Zorb and all the nice warm water. And it's so cold out, it's three degrees today. Three, Ooh. As soon as you get out though, you get a jump in the hot tub. That really was an ultimate Kiwi experience. Oh, I really wish I was going again. <laughs> I need to get dried, I need to get dressed, and I need to head over to the next destination I have here in Rotorua, which is also an absolute classic. And here we are at Skyline Rotorua. I've been to Skyline Luge and Gondola countless times. Albeit I usually go to the Queenstown location, I can never resist the luge. You get a gondola to the top of the hill and then take multiple tracks down on a luge, which is a sort of sled with wheels. I better get inside though, because the queue is looking a little bit long. So this is Skyline Skyride's Rotorua. There's various packages you can get to do the luge, the zip line, the ledge swing, and or the gondola. The one I opted for was the gondola, three luge rides, and then the zip line. And that cost a total of $116. Now that is not discounted and not couponed. I couldn't find any discount codes or coupons for here. So full price, unfortunately. It's some good fun, whether you're going slow, whether you're going fast, whether you're doing a zip line, whether you're doing a ledge swing. It's just fantastic, I love it here. I do think the one of the only downsides to this is if you've only picked three luge rides, there's so many tracks to choose from, you're never gonna get to experience them all. This is fantastic. 
right in those corners. Well, that was pretty good, but um, I think my camera got a little bit scuffled. That's what action camera's for, right? Next up, I'm going to try the zip line. That was pretty freaking awesome. Gotta love a zip line, huh? Uh, I've got just enough time for one more luge ride. Well, I've got just enough tickets and enough time for one more luge ride. Okay. You know what? A lot of these adventure sports and things does seem to just bring out the inner child in all of us. <laughs> Since this was my last luge ride, I thought I'd take it up a gear. That is my time at Skyline Skyrides over. It was incredible fun. Obviously time is now a bit of a factor because it's 2.30. I was kind of expecting to be done by like one-ish. So um, I'm going to have to play it by ear what I've got planned for the rest of the day now. That's a cool little feature. Before you return your helmet, they have these little scanners on the side of them. And it's linked to all of the different video clips that you've taken, like photographs and videos. So if you want any like souvenirs or something like that, scan it in. I'm going to be heading back into town now. Oh, it's now three o'clock, which means that all the time that I had planned for a couple of activities and stuff might go a little bit awry now. Unfortunately, it's just so busy. I mean, this I should have been done by like one o'clock. It's taken an extra two hours longer than I expected it to just from like queuing up. But ooh, I'm going to try and see if I can fit a few more things in. But I need to be in Mata Mata today by six o'clock. Incidentally, one of the great things about having a van was there was nowhere to park. But I managed to get parking in the camper van only spots. So camper vans for the win there. Because, look, if the cars are just circling the car park trying to look for something. Oh, there we go. If you guys are ever out trying to collect these, Paper Plus has them, and that was a lifesaver because I've got my gondola and i got my Rotorua. I've managed to collect all of them so far, and I don't want to miss out on them now. Paper Plus. Very few tourists know to look there, and they usually have them. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird, but when you see another traveler's autobahn, man, it, it seems like, hey guys, what's up? I've had it a few times now where I, like, I'll pull up next to one of them or I'll see another Traveler's Auto Barn van somewhere and it's just... We don't know each other, it's just, it's like a, it's like some sort of like van cult or something, I don't know. So this was my backup plan. I'm now at the Kuyura Park. The Kuyura Park is one of the only free geothermal locations that you can visit in Rotorua. And you can go on a nice free self-guided one. This is a good one if you've only got a limited amount of time or because it's free and a limited amount of budget as well. So this is the big mud pool at the top. So it's named Kui Rao because according to Maori legend, this never used to be a heated lake. It was like just Lake Rotoroa just across there. Normal, cool, regular pool. There was a maiden who was having a swim in the lake. And then a Tanipa, which is a sort of a giant serpent, snatched Kui Rao out of the water and dragged her down to her death. This angered the gods so much 
that they boiled the water in, in order to kill and cook spatani pot. That, everyone, is the Kulirao Park. That, unfortunately, is my time up. I need to be heading over to Matamata because uh, I need to check into a campsite there and um, I have a very narrow window opportunity to try and get checked in. Gotta be going. Here we are, Brock's place. Ah, coin operated shower system. $2 for five minutes. Here's the showers. A couple of washrooms on this side. A couple of spots here as well that you can plug in your devices if you need to charge anything. This Lord needs a clean, help yourself to the mop. <laughs> I like it, this is probably the more quirky site that I've stayed on. I'm kind of in for the night now. It's um, it's six o'clock, so that means I've got plenty of time for for nothing really, because I don't have any power. So it's gonna be a little bit cold in here. I might actually close these vents a little. Dinner fit for a king. Apple, noodles, and cider. Incidentally, this is kind of what I've been eating and drinking on days where I've not been getting takeout food and stuff for the last few days. What a stupid idea. My parents' cider company, this is their cider. So I've been getting most of these actually for free. Thanks mom, thanks dad. Mm. Bit of product placement for old mill cider there. Little did I know tonight would be the coldest night by far. Many's a day in the 40 degree heat of India, I've reminisced about this exact cold night. It's um, it's a little bit cold tonight. I'm definitely missing not having like, power and heat. I'm really tired, but like, I'm also quite cold. Oh, good morning everyone. It's now day seven of the trip. But this is what it looks like in the daylight. As you can see, it's a bit. And curiosity got the best of me with the cone operated shower, which, well. Right. I'm on your marks, get set. Go. Five minutes. <laughs> Shower. Then I had a quick look around the farm in daylight before heading off to Hobbiton. I've been to the premiere of each Tolkien movie since The Fellowship of the Ring back in 2002, and I've always loved the aesthetic of Hobbiton and Hobbit houses. In fact, if I could build my own house, it would be a Hobbit house. So visiting Hobbiton has been a dream of mine for years, and I'm actually quite sorry for all the other tourists, and even the tour guide for today, because I was in nerd heaven. Just went to the ticketing offices down there, I got my ticket and a little mini map of Hobbiton. At the top is the cafe and at the bottom is the little gift shop. And the departures are right next to. So from the Shire's Rest, it's just a short bus ride down to the actual Hobbiton movie set. It's quite a long way off from the road. I wonder if everyone's as excited as I am. huge right now. If anyone's watched my channel for long, you'll know that on my very first episode, in the very first few seconds, at this exact spot, I cut in a scene of Bilbo Baggins running down the hill shouting, I'm going on an adventure. That was my very first YouTube video, and now here I actually am at the set. You just see that into the top, you both I know, I know. Calm down, calm the nerd down. It's just so cool though. So it turns out the Hobbiton tour was far larger than I was expecting. And the attention to every tiny little detail was absolutely incredible. 
even things that people can barely see. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll Photoshop one in later. <laughs> of all the Hobbit houses, the crowning glory at the top of the hill was Bag End, my absolute favorite house. <laughs> There's a drone ban here, so I had to improvise to get more views of the house of Bag Ends. And weirdly enough, Bag End isn't even the best part of Hobbiton, and nor was Sam Gamgee's house. With the new Beyond the Door experience, you can actually go into a real Hobbit house, sit at a Hobbit desk, lay on a Hobbit bed, or even... Mm. And I wasn't gonna pass up the opportunity of a lifetime. That's dedication for you. I am living the absolute dream. And again, the attention to detail inside was even more impressive. And they'd even thrown in a few Easter eggs for crazy fans like me. It's very special, that. It's the best salt in all the Shire. <laughs> At this point, even fans of the movie must be thinking, that's it. But no, the next stop is the famous Green Dragon Inn. So as part of the tour, you get a complimentary drink, either an ale, stout, cider, or ginger beer. Quite a number of years now, I've wanted to sit at the Green Dragon, have an ale, and something to eat. I'm so looking forward to this. Yeah, I had to eat quick because I really wanted to look around the Green Dragon. Working as an active cafe, it's still packed with attention to detail and recreating the magic of the movies. The only brew for the brave and true is coming from the Green Dragon. The tour then ends with a walk along the waterfront and one last look at Hobbiton from afar. Plastic fusses. <laughs> You keep nasty plastic fish. And then back onto the bus and back down hard to reality. Even despite the terrible weather, I could totally live there. Only if I got back in. A lot of the things that they had in the gift shop were really, really expensive though. It's all like wet to workshop models and stuff like that that are made really, really high quality. Unfortunately, it's just like a general keepsake or something like that. They were a little bit too expensive. But I did, however, get a Green Dragon ale mug. I also got a bottle of Hobbit cider. I'm now gonna head up to Matamata and see if I can get my fridge magnets for Matamata and maybe see if they've got like a Hobbit, Hobbiton one. Hopefully they have a Hobbiton one. All the gift shops that I've seen so far are shut because it's Sunday. Paper Plus is also shut for the whole weekend. So everything is closed. I'm so, oh, I'm worried now I'm gonna be able to get one. They do actually have a pretty cool looking information site. I might just check in there. That is without a doubt the coolest information site I've ever seen. And they had my Matamata Mata fridge magnet. So mission accomplished. I was so, so worried just then I wasn't gonna get it. You'll never guess what, you'll never guess what. So I'm gonna grab a pack for my lunch and I come across a dollar store that had more magnets. I got Bag End and Middle Earth. I'm totally adding these to the collection right now. Middle Earth, Bag End, what a collection. And then once I finish my pie, we're off to Auckland to Journey's End. Oh. Mmm. I'm gonna miss pies, man, seriously. Pastry everywhere. Anyway, if you guys are ever in Matamata and you're after a good pie, Ronnie's Bakery, remember. That's it right there.
Ronnie's Bakery. That's where I got the pies from. Great pies. Here we are now in downtown Auckland. Kind of limited for parking spaces when you consider the size of the van. The Auckland Sky Tower has 360 views of Auckland and all the various points of interest around the city. Got an impressive view of Auckland Harbour. So this one might be a little bit of a stretch, but on this side, you can see the Pacific. And on this side, you can kind of see the Tasman Sea. But the Sky Tower is actually quite, quite cleverly designed. Because New Zealand has so many earthquakes, it is actually able to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. Which is reassuring when I'm being up here, because New Zealand gets quite a few earthquakes. Now there are two main observation decks that you can get on a standard ticket. The standard ticket, if you book it online in advance, is $38. If you book it when you turn up, it's $42. So it's wise to book it in advance. The great glass floor. I know, I know, I know it looks absolutely fine, but it's still a bit tentative walking across it. That has kind of put me in mind a little bit of the CN Tower, not only in how it looks, but in just the experience of being up here. Although, all the buildings surrounding this one are quite a considerable amount shorter than they were in Toronto. And also, the Kushal. <laughs> it's funny to think not too long ago, I was in Christchurch starting this whole trip. It's been quite an interesting journey, but um, a bit of a tricky one when you go in solo. It's been quite a few times in my travels so far when I can't help but thinking that, yeah, this journey just be better if it was shared with someone else. It was then time for me to leave and see if I could find my Auckland fridge magnet. Weirdly though, none of the stores in the area seem to have them. That's definitely a downside to Auckland. I just paid 20 bucks for two hours of parking. I mean, that's more than double what I paid to stay overnight in Matamata. And I've just got enough time to maybe go to a local Paper Plus and see if I can get my Auckland magnet. Whew, $20 for two hours of parking. That's just plain crazy. Who would pay those kind of prices? I have to say, I am pretty baffled. I've been to four Paper Plus stores in Auckland and a bunch of souvenir stores and couldn't find the magnets anywhere. I guess I'm without my Auckland magnet. I've managed to get them in every single city I've been in. I have managed to get a few novelty ones. I've looked absolutely everywhere and was unable to find a single one in Auckland, which is crazy because it is the biggest city. I can't understand it. But come on, Auckland, what are you playing at? Everywhere else in the country you can get them, just not here. I don't understand that at all. I've checked into the hotel and now I just need to pack up everything that I've got here in the van uh, so that it's all basically ready to go. And that way I can start setting up the van ready for departure. It's a bit hard to know where to start really. Kind of a shame, I've enjoyed driving around down the van the whole time. There we go. I have to find out somewhere I can get the LPG filled. I need to find out somewhere I can fuel it up. I need to find out somewhere I can do a dump. I need to find out somewhere I can use the dump station, get rid of the grey water, fill up on clean water, and then I need to wash the car. So I have four things I have to do all through the van are all different locations. There doesn't seem to be like one spot you can go for everything, which is weird, because this is like the perfect spot to have a one-stop shop to get everything done, but I don't know.
The van is now completely clean. The one last thing that I have to do is to fill it up with petrol right before I take it in tomorrow. But it's now seven o'clock and I think that deserves to be done for the day, I'd say. I'm now gonna go pick up something for dinner and then I'm gonna head back to the hotel. Wedges and pizza from Hell's. I do like Hell's pizza. You know, I think that's gonna be me done for the night. I think I'm just gonna watch some TV, go to bed, pack up everything in the morning after I've turned the van. But yeah, other than that, I think I'm done for the day. I will see you all in the morning. Gosh, well, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the bonus day of the road trip. That is where Dan, the van, and I have to part company. Farewell, buddy. It's been incredible fun. <laughs> it's been like a second home to me the entire time. Kind of a little bit upset to be leaving, really. It's actually quite sad. <sighs> anyway, that's Dan now off on his next adventure, and that's me now off to continue my adventure. It's been an amazing road trip, really. I don't think I would have done a road trip like that by myself if it wasn't for the fact that I did that big road trip with my granddad back at the hotel. So, because my flight is gonna be at six o'clock in the morning, I had to check in at three o'clock in the morning, so it makes sense that just for the rest of the day and the rest of the afternoon, I just take it easy and try and relax as much as I can, maybe even try and get a little bit of sleep as well, because I've got 26 hours of flying or something coming up ahead of me, so it's probably just best if I were to spend the rest of the afternoon chilling out. To the airport. And so that's it. A total of 1,640 kilometers, 11 cities, 22 activities, and a total of seven days of travel and five campsites on the ultimate New Zealand road trip. I spent a total of $2,150. That works out to be $849 for fuel, ferry, and van expenses like cleaning and gas bills, $111 on accommodation and campsites, a whopping $895 on all the crazy activities that I did, $201 on food and groceries, and $156 in souvenirs like my magnets and the Hobbit cider. Without all the discounts and coupons, this trip would have probably been upwards of 3,500, probably well over 5,000 if I'd have rented a car and stayed in hotels. Now I could probably have saved a substantial amount more if I didn't pay so much for all those lovely activities and souvenirs, but remember, this is the adventure capital of the world. And with all that, I'm sorry to be going so soon. I've made some memories that will last a lifetime. But for right now though, I think I'm quite ready for another adventure. Ooh.